I want to uh, share with you now Uncle Mike's Story Corner. Today's Story Corner is rather grim and not a happy Uncle Mike's Story Corner. But it has to do with a woman who lived not far from the Daniel Scappin studio here in the foothills of the North Georgia Mountain in a town called Kennesaw, Georgia. For months, Roseanne Boyland had been worrying her family with bizarre notions she had picked up on the Internet. For example, the actor Tom Hanks was dead. A national furniture chain was trafficking children. Many prominent Democrats were pedophiles. Then early in January, she texted her older sister that she was heading to Washington with a friend to support President Donald J. Trump and protest what was happening in the country. She wrote to her sister, quote, I'm going to D.C. I don't know all the details yet, end quote. Ms. Boylan, 34 years of age, was one of five people who never made it home from the January 6th protest, which erupted in violence when hundreds of people stormed into the Capitol. Her death has left her family grappling to understand how Mrs. Boyland, who they say had never even voted before 2020, how she wound up waving a flag on which was printed, Don't Tread on Me, amid a crowd of fanatic supporters of the former president before walking up the steps of the Capitol to her death. Their frustration, the family's frustration, deepened Further this week, when Republicans in the Senate blocked an effort to establish an independent commission to look into the origins and the handling of the attack on the Capitol. Ms. Boylan's older sister, Lana, said in a text message after the vote, quote, why anyone would not want to find out what happened, even just to prevent it from happening again, is beyond me. End quote. For months before the rally, Ms. Boylan had bombarded her friends and relatives with messages and links to long videos about the fantastical theories she had come to accept as fact. Many of the false claims spilled from QAnon, the pro-Trump conspiracy theory movement that rose in popularity over the course of his presidency and promoted the idea that many Democrats and celebrities are part of a global pedophile ring, a theory that 15% of Americans believe, according to one poll this week. Many of its supporters falsely believe that President Biden had stolen the election. And some of these people attended Trump's rally on January 6th. Miss Boylan's sudden fixation so alarmed her family members and friends that some of them asked her to stop talking to them about politics or just to stop talking altogether. Some of her closest friends believe that Ms. Boylan was a vulnerable target for the conspiracy theorists. After a stint in drug rehab, she had returned to her parents' home and largely avoided drugs for several years, her family said. But the isolation brought about by the pandemic was making it harder. QAnon filled a void in her life, they said, helping distract her from thoughts of returning to drugs, even as QAnon itself acted as a different kind of a hallucinogen. Blair Boylan, her younger sister, said, quote, I was worried that she was trading one addiction for another. It just seemed like, yes, she's not doing drugs, but she's very obsessively online, watching all these YouTube videos and going down the rabbit hole. End quote. The family is also struggling to understand how she died. From the video of the chaotic siege, 
It appeared that she had died after being caught in a crush of rioters. But the autopsy by the Washington Medical Examiner's Office did not find evidence of trampling and concluded that Miss Boylan had died of an overdose of amphetamines. Family members said it was likely that the only amphetamine in her body was the Adderall that she took every day by prescription, though it appeared she might have taken at least twice her prescribed dose. We just want to find out what happened, her sister said, to be able to rest. This has been so messed up. We just want to grieve the normal way. End quote. For years, Ms. Boylan had been barred from voting because she had been convicted of felony drug possession. But she had also shown little interest in politics until 2020. In the fall of that year, though, free from probation, she made it clear early on that she planned to cast a ballot for Mr. Trump. She registered to vote on October 3rd, a month before the election, according to records. Stephen Marsh, a friend of Miss Boylan's, who said that she had been so thrilled that she had called his mother, said, quote, she was so happy that she was now able to vote. She was so excited about it because her past made it difficult for her to participate, end quote. But her increasing absorption in the QAnon community was by that time pushing some of her closest friends away. One friend since childhood texted her on October 3rd after Miss Boylan had sent her a long text message and screenshots about purported government manipulation of the news media. Her friend said, quote, I care about you, but I think it would be best if we didn't talk for a while. Please don't send me any more political stuff. End quote. Miss Boylan was the middle of three sisters growing up in Kennesaw, Georgia, a city of 34,000 people about 25 miles northwest of Atlanta. She and her sisters were close as children, and her younger sister said she had been inspired by Miss Boylan's assertiveness and confidence. Even then, she had a penchant for conspiracy theories, her sisters said, but harmless ones, like the existence of extraterrestrials or Bigfoot. But when she was about 16, her life took a turn when she began dating an abusive boyfriend, her sisters said. She would blame black eyes on soccer practice and once came home with an unexplained shoulder injury. And around that time, she also got hooked on opioids. She eventually dropped out of high school and her relationship with her family became strained. In 2009, when she was 23, she was charged with felony drug possession. Several other cases would follow, the most recent in April of 2013, after which she was given five years of probation. It was only in July 2014 when she learned about the pregnancy of her older sister, and she pledged to be a better role model for her niece, her sisters said, and from that moment on, with a brief, a few brief relapses, she was largely sober. Her older sister said, quote, she was always talking about how she couldn't wait to be the aunt and she was going to be the cool aunt. Miss Boylan grew close to both of her nieces, often picking them up from school and documenting milestones in their lives. She spent much of her time going to group meetings and counseling other people who were struggling with drugs. At one point, she hoped to become a counselor herself. When the pandemic arrived, though, she had to spend much of her time alone at her parents' house, and her in-person group meetings were canceled. She told her sisters that she frequently felt an urge to begin using drugs again. Her younger sister said, quote, she was really struggling. She tried doing the Zoom meetings, but she wasn't getting anything out of it. She felt out of control, end quote. Her friends began noticing that she was posting about conspiracy theories in Mr. Trump. Before long, she was texting them about Pizzagate, the conspiracy theory that included false claims about Democrats' trafficking of children in the basement of a pizza parlor in Washington. Her younger sister said... In a text message to her childhood friend, quote, 
I've been watching it all on YouTube. What most captured my attention was the Save the Children slogan that QAnon members used to spread, use to spread false claims about Democrats trafficking of children. Her sister said, quote, Miss Boylan cared a lot about kids. She thought she was fighting for children in her own way and just trying to spread the word about underground pedophile rings and just all of those things. I think QAnon had this way of making these things seem really believable. End quote. At about 8, 8.30 p.m. on January 5th, Miss Boylan began the roughly 10-hour drive to Washington with a friend, Justin Winchell. They parked in Virginia and took a bus into the city to see Mr. Trump at the rally, where he riled up the crowd with unsubstantiated claims that his election loss had been rigged. Trump told the crowd, quote, if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore, end quote. Miss Boylan headed with many of the other protesters down the street to the Capitol. Miss Boylan could barely be made out at first in the footage of the crowd's surge up the Capitol steps, a short figure outfitted in a black hoodie and American flag sunglasses. She disappeared into the mob inside the tunnel that presidents use when they emerge for their inaugurations. It was the scene of some of the city's most brutal hand-to-hand fighting, and videos showed rioters crushing police officers between doors and warning that the crowd could become dangerously packed. Just minutes later, after a push by the police that sent the crowd tumbling back out of the tunnel, she could be seen lying on her side, after which two men dragged her away from the door and began trying to resuscitate her. It appeared to be a case of trampling, but when the medical examiner concluded that she had died of, quote, acute amphetamine intoxication, end quote, a ruling that left her family, convinced that she had not relapsed into drug abuse, flummoxed. She had been taking Adderall regularly under a doctor's prescription and had not, be, had not been seen to have any adverse effects, the family said. Several forensic pathologists and toxicologists who reviewed the autopsy report said in interviews that the level of amphetamine in her blood, most likely from the Adderall, had been enough to be potentially fatal. Ian McIntyre, the former chief toxicologist at the San Diego County Medical Examiner's Office, said the level could be consistent with her having having taken both of her 30 milligram daily doses at the same time, something her sister said something that her older sister said that uh, she sometimes did. Mr. McIntyre said the high dosage of amphetamine, along with the raucous scene, her heart disease and obesity, could have been enough to make her heart stop. The day after her death, her older sister's husband, husband, Justin, told reporters that Mr. Trump had, quote, incited a riot last night that killed four of his biggest fans, end quote. And then came a spate of cruel messages to the family from all sides, people who said they were glad Miss Boylan had died, and others who had been infuriated by Justin's comments. Her older sister and her husband were left wondering what they had missed, how they could have helped Miss Boylan before she fell too deeply into the conspiracy theories. Her older sister said, quote, that's part of the reason I feel guilty. Because none of us thought too much about it when she started looking into it. I understand that she was somewhere she shouldn't have been, but she would have not have been there if it weren't for all the misinformation. What a sad story. The reason I, I, I wanted to give that to you um, word for word it was obvious. So many people who, who have obvious difficulties for whatever reason, poorly educated, uh, addiction problems, um, just general ignorance about how the world works. These are the targets 
of these crazed organizations like QAnon or the Proud Boys or the Three Percenters, all of these people are so just basically fucked up from, from the ground up. They're incapable of independent thought. They are perfect targets for these cults, which is what QAnon is, which is what all of these racist, insane organizations are. They are cults. And the Christian fascists have turned Christianity into a death cult, a contemporary death cult. I'm, it's always been a death cult, but a contemporary death cult that links politics with, with this insanity. It, it, it's just, it's so difficult to sort through. I mean, I mean, it really is. How, how do you, how do you find the thread that you can pull to unravel this, this Gordian knot? I mean, where, where do you find it in all this madness, a collection of mental disease and, and, and Christianity and, and fascist politics and, and genocidal thoughts and racism. I mean, where, how do you reach into that mess and, and try to rescue people or show people, look, you're going fucking insane. You really are. You're descending into madness. Listen, listen to me might be the way to approach them. Your life is short. Your life is limited. Why do you want to spend it like this? Why do you want to live with this kind of poison floating around inside of you? I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, that'll work, Mike. That'll work. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.